So anyway, I think I want to end the show tonight talking about the Steve Austin story. Dusty versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. Dun, dun, dun. So most people don't know this about me, but I was actually voted by MTV to be Stone Cold Steve Austin's number one fan in the world when I was 24 years old. And they actually flew me out to Boston to interview Stone Cold Steve Austin for MTV. I actually shaved my head for this show like a dumbass. <laughs> God, I look so stupid. Anyway... I was a giant Stone Cold fanboy. You might actually recognize some of his memes in some of my videos. I kind of take on his personality a little bit in some of my videos. Because basically all a lot of my videos are, are like wrestling promos against religion. Religion, I'm going to kick your ass because Dusty said so. Anyway, it was a cool time. It was fun. Got to hold the belt and all that cool shit. So fast forward to April 21st of this year. And on my Facebook, I told a story, a true story, about how the WWE threatened to sue me back when I was about... 25 or 26, about a year after I went to meet Stone Cold. This is a true story of those events. So the recent death of China made me remember an interesting experience I had with the WWE and I thought I would share it. I grew up watching wrestling with my father. It was one of the few things we really bonded over and I loved. And when I reached my 20s, I was still a big fan. About that time, the internet was just becoming pretty popular and I realized that the wrestlers would someday want their domain names. So I bought up all the most popular wrestling domains that were not taken in hopes of actually giving them to the wrestlers themselves. I own China.com, SteveAustin.com, VinceMcMahon.com, EricBischoff.com, BillGoldberg.com, DwayneJohnson.com, and many others. I then contacted the WWE and told them I had bought up all their domain names and offered to give them to them. I actually talked to this guy in person when I went to meet Stone Cold. He was one of the representatives there for the WWE. I have no idea who this guy was, really. But what he told me was, he said the .com domains were worthless because there were many other domain suffixes, such as net and org and whatnot, and in the future, the dot-com versions would not be worth anything. And honestly, I couldn't believe his response. It was one of the dumbest things I ever heard. I knew the dot-coms were the important domain names, and I told him that, but he wouldn't listen to me. So anyway, I was still a big fan, so I just set up some of the websites for the wrestlers myself. Like, I set up a website for SteveAustin.com and a website for China, so that when their fans went to the internet look for them, they'd actually have websites to go to. And of course, because I own SteveAustin.com, that was a big part of the reason that MTV voted me the number one Steve Austin fan and flew me out to meet him. So while I was there doing the Steve Austin thing, I met most of the other wrestlers like China and The Rock, whose real name is Dwayne Johnson, and I offered all those people their domain names, including Stone Cold Steve Austin. I talked to him and I offered him his SteveAustin.com domain. And basically none of them had any interest in it whatsoever. Now I'm not dissing SteveAustin.com at all. I still love Stone Cold. I just don't think back then he really knew much about the internet and didn't know that .com would be important. So he didn't have any interest in it. But honestly, I was kind of taken back a little bit because I bought these domains for my childhood heroes and I was trying to do something nice for them and give them their domains and none of them really seemed to give a shit about it. So it was actually pretty disappointing for me. So I just kept the domains for myself because I knew they would eventually want them. And about a year later, lawyers from the WWE messaged me and threatened to sue me for the domains. And of course, I was pissed, and I actually messaged back to him, and I was like, really? I went to every one of these wrestlers, and I asked if they wanted their domains, and they said they didn't. I even went to WWE officials and asked them if they wanted their domains, and they didn't. And now you're fucking threatening to sue me on this bullshit? That's fucking ridiculous. And so basically, I told the lawyers that I was originally planning on giving them to you guys, but now you're actually going to have to do something for me. You're going to have to fly me out to a couple of pay-per-views or some shit. So I guess they thought that was a good deal, so they did. They flew me out to a couple of pay-per-views, took me backstage to meet some of the wrestlers. And they sent me and my wife Cindy on a bruise cruise with a bunch of my favorite wrestlers. Like, China was there, and Mark Merrow back when she was with Sable? Was that her name? I don't remember. Whoever he was with back then. Didn't she go on to marry Steve Austin or something? I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, she was there, and uh, Triple H was there, Shawn Michaels was there, the Headbangers were there. A whole fucking bunch of wrestlers were there, and it was pretty fucking fun. But anyway, I told this story on Facebook, and Ben of the Drunken Peasants, who runs the Drunken Peasants wiki thing here, basically went to Twitter and sort of asked Steve Austin if any of this was true. And basically, Steve Austin's response was, don't remember, which got 35 likes and 11 shares, which I felt was basically almost his way of saying I wasn't telling the truth or something. So I responded and I explained to him, I told you I owned your website and offered to give it to you, but you weren't interested. It was around 94. But it was actually not 94, it was 98. I corrected myself and told him it was 98. And then he was like, nope, I don't remember that. Almost like he was saying I'm lying again. So then I was like, okay, here's a stupid video I made about it a long time ago. It shows footage. Maybe it will jog your memory. And I posted the footage I just showed you guys of me on the show with him. And then nothing, nothing. He didn't say anything back. Almost like he was not wanting to admit it actually happened. But it did. It fucking happened. 
And honestly, I would love to have Steve Austin on the show sometime. If you guys want to go out there and bug him to death to be on the show, I'd really appreciate it. I think he would be interested to see who his biggest fan turned out to be. Stone Cold's number one fan on MTV turned out to be Call the Dusty. I'm not sure if he'll be pleased about that or not, but it'll be funny to see what his reaction is. So anyway, Stone Cold, you're welcome to come on the show anytime. Still love you, and I hope you'll at least consider it. I'm gonna judge my soul.